Hello everyone, I'm the Viking General and this is the highly anticipated video of a three-part series about the matchlock unit. In this first part, we're going to talk about how to use matchlocks in battle. In the second part, we're going to talk about all the different matchlock units. And in the final part, we're going to see how matchlock units would actually fit into a campaign. Before we finally get into this, my trusty YouTube analytics page shows me that a lot of viewers haven't subscribed yet. It would really help me out a lot if you do. And if you also ring the bell, you'll actually be notified when I publish part two and don't have to trust the mighty algorithm to show it to you. Thanks. With that out of the way, let's begin. Matchlock units have two very distinct advantages over archers. The first is that they pretty much ignore the armor on enemy units, so a volley into Naginata Samurai will kill about the same number of men as a volley into a unit via Ryashigaru. The second benefit is that their volleys inflict morale penalties on a unit hit, which can be of immense help for routing enemy units. But how to use matchlock units in a battle? Well, the biggest thing to remember is that these units need a clear or straight line of fire to the enemy. This, coupled with the fact that they have a short range, means that it's difficult to actually try to shoot shoot the enemy while at the same time keeping them safe. In field battles, there are various tactical options to use them. The first is to either have matchlock units firing from a hill onto a flat terrain or from flat terrain up to a hill. This way you can have your matchlock units fire over your own troops and into the enemy. To see if your matchlock units have a clear shot, a useful thing is to zoom in as close as possible and try to see from their perspective. If the view is obstructed, then their shots are probably obstructed as well. The second is to have your matchlock units wait behind your troops on the flanks and as soon as the front lines engage, have them swing around the flank and shoot the enemy in the flank or the rear. The third is to intentionally leave gaps in your front line which your matchlocks can shoot through. The fourth is to put your matchlocks in a single or dual file in front of your front line, shooting approaching enemies and after shooting retreating to the safety behind your front line. Of course, these options aren't mutually exclusive so you can mix and match. As you've probably gathered, most of these options are more easily done while well on the defense. Attacking with matchlocks can be very difficult, just trying to march towards an enemy front line will see them being filled with arrows before they are able to fire their guns, especially on legendary difficulty. But matchlock units really shine the most during a defensive siege. When a missile unit is placed on walls, it gets a huge boost to their reload speed. This means that matchlock units are able to fire much faster than normal and can be devastating to advancing troops. To get the most out of these units, spread them out in single file and have a unit of Yari Ashigaru and Yari wall formation below the wall. In conclusion, having a few matchlock units in your army can greatly boost your range damage, in particular against tough elite enemy infantry or cavalry. They are good in defensive situations, especially defensive siege situations, but they are near Nearly useless during an offensive siege. While they do require a bit of micro to get the most out of such a unit, if you micro them well, they will definitely make your battles a lot easier. And of course, they are very fun to use. Thank you for watching.